Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Hunter's Gathering. Come around the campfire. Uh, I am your host, Markia McCarty. And yeah, this is your chill one-stop shop for behind the games looks with everything from art design to music design to GMing to playing in the worlds. And of course, what we do with games here at Hunter's Entertainment. So for this particular episode, uh, I am going to be joined by a very awesome uh, person that I've known for a number of years. And I just enjoy him uh, both as a player, uh, individual, and then also as a library bard, uh, Mr. Xander Genre. Yeah, I saw the jazz hands. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think I might have done it on the wrong side, but it's like also the Zoom screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's however you feel. <laughs> yes. Uh, so for those of you in our chat and uh, uh, hanging out with us right now, uh, Xander is the GM for Altered Carbon Osaka Eternal, which is the Osaka Eternal supplement to Altered Carbon. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with Altered Carbon, uh, you might know the Netflix show. Maybe you didn't realize it was a role-playing game, but it is, and it's an amazing one. Uh, and Xander is the one that is helping create this wonderful world, this futuristic cyberpunk just post-apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah. It's a little Dystopia. bit of everything. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of everything. You know, it's like an everything donut. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yes, is uh, jamming that for us. So yeah, uh, and of course on Tuesday nights, we have Hunters Presents, which is where we are playing that with Xander, uh, not only with Xander, but we have our lineup of usual suspects uh, with, a, with a very interesting change that happened last week, which we will be talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, for Hunters Presents uh, Osaka Eternal, uh, our line up is, of course, Xander Genre, who you just, you met. Um, I am also playing uh, Markia McCarty. I am Satya. And and, uh, <laughs> and we'll go through a character breakdown of everybody after we do a, a quick little recap. Uh, we also have Michelle Wynn Bradley uh, as Benton. We have had Louis Carrasco as the character Patch, but then we also have... Uh, mm -hmm. Currently. Uh, yeah, I currently have uh, Gabe Hicks uh, as Patch. Right. We'll get into more detail about that. <laughs> uh, we also have Melee Damage uh, back as Sable, and there is a lot going on there. So I'm so excited about this cast with everything. So uh, Xander, let's do a quick recap of what's been going on. Like yeah. what's been going on in Osaka Eternal like up to this point, we're two episodes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two episodes of a three-shot run, so there's a lot that's crammed into a little space, you know. Uh, the characters have been running around trying to figure out uh, the different connections that they have to this AI that went missing Yukio, uh, mm -hmm. and there was this event that happened at the Kabuki Theater, um, and one of the characters was beheaded. But in the world of <laughs> Altered Carbon, uh, the personality or like the soul of a person is sort of downloaded onto these small hard drives called VHF stacks. Uh, and you can transfer that to another body called a sleeve. So in this case, we knew that Louis, for, for, it was a secret from the cast and for, from Marquia too. Uh, but I knew that Luis was only gonna be able to do one of the episodes. And so we were looking for somebody else that was gonna be coming in uh, for the last two. And I wanted to work it into the story uh, that Luis's character meets an untimely end, and then we reboot him as a, a new sleeve in Gabe. And Gabe nailed it this episode. Uh, you could really feel like the work that he put in to look like or act like Luis's patch. And you can really tell the difference between when he was the player describing things and really getting into character as patch. It felt you felt the difference. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, we have a little clip that we're going to play of uh, Gabe Hicks taking over uh, the character of Patch, like literally being respun into a sleeve. So yes, I love this segment. Uh, go ahead <laughs> and this like short clip and we'll be back right after it. You look around for a mirror. This isn't right away when you've been resleeved, but it's still taking time to get used to. 
you're able to find a mirror because you are in your quarters. It's comfortable. It's very traditionally themed. There are t a tatami mat floor. Um, you've got your bed and then this sort of reinforced paper walls along with a mirror uh, that now your new sleeve is staring back at you. This is interesting, I suppose. Ugh. Honestly, probably look to see if there's like anything to drink and not even just alcohol, just anything to hydrate with kind of like a clammy feeling in my mouth. Yeah, you see actually there is sort of a glass vase next to drinking glasses and this is, it's just full of water. I grab it and then just pour it into the cup and then just down it pretty immediately, almost like dehydrated. As you're gulping this fluid down, you can feel that your muscles feel different. Your digestive system feels different. Everything is a new experience. And you do feel that this quenching property of, of the water. You know that this sleeve has been in, like, stasis, in preserve, for emergencies. And you don't know what triggered it but this seems to be some sort of emergency situation from your family. That's a problem. As you look around in the mirror, you see the telltale signs of these humps uh, uh, on the sleeve's back. It's covered by this finely tailored suit, though, uh, and it seems as though you're in uh, just some the nicer clothes than you've had in quite some time. Yes. Uh, something that I was saying to Xander. Yeah, we had a little like a little cheat of a conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> because we couldn't it help ourselves. Happens. <laughs> yeah, it just happens. Um, one of one of the things that I was saying is that like, yes, if this was a real society where this would happen, my first inclination would be like, oh, I have a face. I can feel my face. I need to see my mm -hmm. face, you know, go for the mirror, which is just such a huge mechanic in this. And then like Xander, you brought up uh, Animorphs. Animorphs. Yeah. Well, yeah, going back to the mirror thing, they, they make a big point in the Netflix series whenever a character is sort of resleeved that they're going through this process of like, who am I? And I need to look and see uh, and have this sort of realization with the self. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was obsessed with the Animorphs books uh, when I was younger. Uh, they're still very good. Uh, and one of the things that they focused on was that, you know, it was aimed at teens and it's these teens that are undergoing the ability to shape shift and change into animals. And they always say like, it's so strange to see the body that you're born in or like the, the, the hands that you're used to change into someone else's hands uh, is just such a jarring experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could only imagine, well, I could imagine it in dreams. Right. <laughs> I, think, I think we've had role playing in... games. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just to stretch that muscle. Um, yeah, and then for our chat room, hello everyone. Oh, I see Animorphs is a, a big thing that just like, they're like, Great. Animorphs! Yes. <laughs> Listen, I had two copies of every book in that series because I was part of like the mail-in book club and one was for like my collection that I didn't open and read and one was like my reading copy that I would read until I wore it out. <laughs> I love that. That is a sign of a true collector. <laughs> and they're worth nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like one for me, one for infamy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> for posterity. Right, posterity. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, okay. I, I realized that I was so excited like with talking with Xander. Let me just uh, let y'all know real quick for like news uh, for oh, this yeah. week. Um, just, so that, just so that you know, we have merch. Merch is available to be able to purchase. Um, we have last call on the Your Zombie Survival oh, Plan Will Fail. I have one of those shirts. But I, I, I'm not going to go dig it out, but I have one. Yeah. They're very cool. They're super cool. I'm going to, apparently there's three days left and I need to get my own. So that's also a reminder for me. <laughs> right? Especially from to, Zombie. <laughs> yeah, to go ahead and do that. So, but yeah, you have three days left with that. Uh, so that, you know, you go to huntersentertainment.com slash merch. And then uh, there you go, all this stuff. 
Uh, and along with that, um, just to remind you that our products do rotate out. New stuff comes in weekly and then old stuff goes bye-bye. So To the hunter's vault. Exactly. <laughs> it gets locked into the hunter's vault. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we just saw the uh, spin up of Gabe's character. Let's let's talk about the overall world mm -hmm. that we have right now with Osaka Eternal, and then let's talk about the character's backstory, and then let's talk about where they are now uh, sure. and the, and the and the recap journey, which would yeah. be like this past week. So yeah, Osaka Eternal um, overall. Um, this is not a supplement that you can purchase just yet, as in have for your own uh it is in progress it is in production mm -hmm. so but you can get a really good look at it with uh xander and us yeah and i, I do want to say too um before we started this i worked a bit with the person that is writing the supplement aki who is mm -hmm. amazing and i work with uh also on another show called clear skies our star trek rpg show on monday nights um uh, but i i definitely had a couple of conversations with them about where they wanted to go uh, and they had such an amazing, clear vision. And they sent over like these documents of timelines of like, this is what happened. This is how we got here. Uh, this is how society reacted and, and things like that. So it was just such a fascinating, like deep dive into something that's being creative or being created rather. And then being able to be creative within that. And, and, uh, and a lot of it is coming from you guys too, from the players. I love uh, being a player, but I also love sparking creativity in my players. So moments that you can have where I know that you're creating on the spot, th those are my favorite. <laughs> uh, there's just something so genuine about it um, that I really love. But you're, you're filling out this world just as much as I am with the decisions that you're making and this tech that you're coming up with on the spot. It's, it's really inspiring. I love that. I love that you uh, allow us to play. I mean, like there's, there's total rules where we're to be like, oh, okay, you have that. How do you have that? Yeah, uh, yeah. And <laughs> you gotta play fair. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can't just be like God mode. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> this isn't some up, up, down, down stuff that you could just like do. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to do that, because that's fun too. <laughs> yeah, we like give it a go. Yeah, <laughs> give it a try. Let's see what the dice say. That's right. what it. <laughs> right. That's what it basically comes down to. So, uh, great. Yeah. Um. So let's go ahead into our characters then, like a quick uh, breakdown with characters. I saved our bigger recap of like character breakdowns and everything until I had you on because I was like. Mm course have the the gm go into this so uh we'll start off with my character right who you um, created and... live on this stream yes yes absolutely uh thank you for the reminder of that uh <laughs> yeah if you wanted to see the character creation of satya who is um banksy meets rufio <laughs> <Bang -a> <laughs> yeah actually the chat room helped me create that and we yeah. did that you can see that video it should be up on vod for twitch and then uh for youtube it'll be out a week after uh it actually aired so if you want to look on mondays and thursdays for new content on our YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash hunters entertainment, then you'll be able to find it there as well. But you could also subscribe because we're still in September and there are so many discounts. Uh, if you subscribe, depending on how many months you want to subscribe for, and we've got some really cool emojis. Uh, maybe our chat room can hit us with some campfires. Uh, <laughs> I love the campfire one. I love the yeah, campfire one so much. <laughs> and the unicorn going, yay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I see here <laughs> the screen cap oh. that we have right now of Satya is <laughs> it's, it's just you with your your hand your your head in your hand. Oh, like a and face you're and you're like, oh dear God. <laughs> yeah, that seems right. That's about what happens. <laughs> I talk about being creative on the spot, and Satya will I'll never see it coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. So with with. Um, making the mechanics of uh, Satya uh, with with the chat, and then um, also, uh, yeah, I I just wanted a chaos demon. Uh, you got it, <laughs> and that's and that's what Satya is. Yeah. I mean, she she literally does what she wants when she wants, but it's surprisingly personable to people that will help her achieve her ends. Mm -hmm. um, while also, uh, she blew up a donut shop. You know, Just as a diversion. 
Yeah. yeah it was as a diversion for cops and mm -hmm. that got her in trouble. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I can talk about that a little bit too, because mm -hmm. one of the things that I loved was working with each of you and developing these characters and then finding what ties them to this world. So uh, within the supplement, there already are entities that exist. Things like the Seppuku Tigers, um, the Yakuza, this theater, the castle in the sky, that sort of thing. And so one of my goals with creating the characters was to tie them to the world somehow and then tie them to each other within that world connection. So for Satya specifically, since you chose on stream to be uh, have the criminal background uh, and have that sort of Banksy-esque uh, sort of criminal, but we'll look the other way for now thing, um, uh, I wanted to say, well, maybe it's that she's either a part of the Seppuku Tigers or wants to be part of them. Uh, and so we sort of came up with this recruitment uh, technique or angle to get mm -hmm. her involved in the storyline. Yes. Uh, and then some other things with her backstory, because um, because of with the chat, we had her at a more advanced age than mm -hmm. the other characters do, which which is a di different roles, um, right. basically. So she's like 84 years of age compared to other it's people. It's a bracket. Exactly. So yeah. it takes you to this whole new level of mechanics. And I, I do recommend for you to watch uh, the VOD where we make this character because it's just like, it's so much fun. We, <laughs> we have a lot of fun with it. I forget who was on that. Some person that co-created mm -hmm. Hunter's Entertainment. Yeah. Uh, Ivan the, Van the, something. Oh, the cause of all my pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that. We blame him for all of our pain. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, and I, I, I love the emojis that are happening in the chat room right now. <laughs> like yay uh yeah so with that we had our 84 so i kind of had to come up with an explanation for why she would be at such an advanced age but then also be like a fledgling criminal <laughs> hmm. where she's starting things out and for what i did with her backstory is that i decided that she had come from a more established family that kind of had her in a societal box mm -hmm. so she was just kind of because of family, family honor, family ideals, that she was literally baby kept in a corner. And um, with with the time frame of things that happen in Altered Carbon, it's not the same amount of time. You could literally be 84 years of age and still have led a very sheltered existence. Mm -hmm. So in any case, with Satya's backstory, she uh, broke loose mm -hmm. and decided she was going to be free in every sense of the word. Um, and that is where she's at now in her journey. And you can really see it with the choices that you make as the character too, because it's really grounded in what if you had spent almost a century in captivity? What would you do, but what would you be unfamiliar with? You know, the customs of social interaction or maybe even dealing with the police or authority in general, you know? Yeah, so it's been, it's been uh, interesting to sort of be the net to catch whatever sort of uh, instincts you have. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having so much fun it's like ridiculous like never never in life would i oh i can't escape this car i'm Let's gonna kick it. <laughs> i'm gonna kick it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let's move on to the character that both uh, Luis Carrasco and also Gabe Hicks are playing right now, Patch. Yeah. So yes, uh, with Patch, please can you whatever you can tell us about their backstory to like. Totally. We, yeah. You don't have to what whatever we can hear. It was funny because um, I had a conversation with Luis about developing Patch, um, and it, it was a lot of the the family ties and things like that were his idea. He wanted to be, you know, connected into the story. Uh, in this, it's really he has this tendency of making these really romanticized characters and and scenarios that I absolutely love. Um, and there was just this like quiet sadness of someone who. Uh, it was also his idea to have him be falling in love with this AI. I told him that, you know, there was a relationship of some kind. And he's like, oh, what if they were in love? And I was like, okay, let's go there. Uh, and so it, it was fun to sort of go in that back and forth of like, who is this person? And what would it be like having a, a sheltered existence in another way? Um, and then how to tie it, that character into the, to the world uh, at large as well. Uh, what are the connections to the Yakuza? Who owns the theater? What's the deal with his family? Why is he ashamed 
of the uh, the wings that are put on his family's sort of sleeves. So um, all of that was was developed with Elise, and then Gabe uh, was already familiar with the altered carbon world, uh, having seen the Netflix series. So it was great that he was literally able to like slide in uh, with that knowledge. And then I, I love where he's been taking it so far. Yes, uh, and I I very much love like the the presentation uh, mm -hmm. that he has like with the, uh, it's even remarked upon. And yeah. <laughs> in the next episode be like, you've seen the same, but there's a lot of differences here. <laughs> yeah, like, and that is, those are choices that Gabe made and that I loved. Yes, absolutely. No, it was just like um, uh, one, of, one of the things that we're gonna have for, for the finale, well, for the finale recap, uh, we were going to have uh, Luis and Gabe on, and they're going to talk all things Patch. Yes, we are Amazing. doing that next week. <laughs> next week, we're <laughs> gathering. We are going in. Uh, That's it's so great. It's going to be so good. I'm so looking forward to this. Um, yeah, and then also with our, our chat room, uh, y'all are ridiculous, and I love you <laughs> so much. <laughs> with literally a Phoenix Goth right now, it's like Dalek voice, exterminate. <laughs> Because they're talking about glitches. <laughs> oh, right. So, so and you know how we feel about glitches. Speaking of glitches, we could talk yes. about Sable next. Uh, Absolutely. Which is Melee's character. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think uh, it's funny, when I called up Melee to talk about what character she would like to play, instantly she's like, Xander, we've got the Malkavian connection. You know I've got to play something that's a little broken. <laughs> I was like, I got you. <laughs> 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 so that was that was where um, this concept of Fox, the AI, came up uh, of someone who is an AI who is trying to fix like broken humans who goes through um, in the in the Netflix series. And there's also an anime movie uh, of Altered Carbon as well that takes place uh, in a different part of Japan. Um, and it's it's an interesting watch. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, this idea of an AI gaining sentience and trying to fix humans, much like humans would fix AI that they, they come across, uh, was, was really an interesting concept. And then Sable came about as this character that is experiencing um, some problems with their DHF stack. And there were even um, a, a mechanic that we talk about in the book that goes along with that. I think you were gonna- Yes, yeah. actually. Um... Well, we were going to get more into that in the oh, sure. second half of everything. We were talking about like going a deep dive into GMing and like tie it back. Yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, for this for this part, we'll just uh, keep a recap with this. And then um, uh, last but not least, definitely not because yeah. uh, she's just like so full of like pep and uh, irrelevance too. Oh, <laughs> which yeah. I, which I just- Yeah, I, irreverence to the yes. situation and- yeah. <laughs> A reverence. Um, so yeah, we have uh, Michelle Wynn Bradley playing Benton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the and the conversation with Michelle was a blast. Uh, coming up with the character with her was was so much fun. Um, the I'm gonna take credit for it. I wanted to give the bionic arm because of Bean, and I asked her like, would you be okay with that? And she she was got down with the idea. So. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah. For those that don't realize, um, our group of players, uh, we are having the same players like for each campaign. Uh, well, we're trying to as much as scheduling allows, obviously. And um, with that, in our Outbreak Undead, something during that campaign, if you want to watch it, I think you should, though. Mm -hmm. um, the character Bean, played by Michelle Wynn Bradley, had uh, an incident. Incident. <laughs> a hiccup, you know? Um, a a, a involuntary change of plan that mm. happened that involved their left arm so that is a wonderful <laughs> nod to have benton <laughs> our beanton <laughs> yeah 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 well I, also i wanted to talk about the name of it because michelle was the one that that brought up uh benton as a nod to ben zaiten uh in mm. uh, japanese mythology as one of like the female gods in this series uh, definitely hit her up about it because she knows more than I do. But Ben Ten is both basically like the shortened version of Ben Zai Ten. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, the reason why I decided on Safia is that oh, yeah. it's uh, the brand of my favorite type of incense, which is Dragon's Blood. Amazing. And I was like, that is her in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, and so. uh, Luis came up with the name Patch because he was saying that's what he saw as a mechanic was doing. 
Man, obviously we're gonna have to ask May why Sable. Right, is I might Sable. have named Sable and just said, "Do you like that?" Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. that's what happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I love that our chat is like talking about uh, different characters. Like uh, Lauren from Not Always Weak is like, "It was only a flesh wound about the whole the <laughs> the hiccup in fans, the yeah, yeah. You know, the left arm." <laughs> yeah, so Benton owns a shop in uh, Osaka, and it's Revamp, which is all about body modification, or sleeve modification in this case, mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of all the rage er, in Osaka. But some people, as we learned this recent episode, have taken it too far, uh, mm -hmm. and they've developed what are called kaiju sleeves. Uh, and so this mm -hmm. is actually a part of the supplement too, but... We're still working on some of the rules, and so I played it fast and loose on the rules department, but we had a great time. Yes, we did. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I had <laughs> such a good time with this because um, I was all, already playing a chaos demon, and then like you put, you put my demon into a kaiju that right. I got to create the parts of. That's like everything that could possibly ever want. Um, and then also um, hitting it up with our chat room. Uh, if you have any questions for Xander or me, like it with Altered Carbon, yes, but also if you want to know things about library bards or uh, uh, fun stuff with Geek and Sundry or fun stuff with like Vampire, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Xander has an extensive resume of <laughs> RPG games. I have a not so modest one myself. Right. So if you, we're, we're here to like converse with you and everything like this, but I love that you brought up kaijus because yes, the recap of what happened this particular week with, like you said, we've gotten to the point where we're still trying to track. Well, we realize that the seppuku tigers uh, were taking us through a test and now it is time to go to the castle in the sky. Time right. to, you know. Oh, I, I did want to bring up the test too because um, part of the uh, sort of world building was this haunted former aquarium of Osaka that is known as the Shell. Uh, and in the supplement, people, there are rumors that it's haunted. And so I wanted to play with it uh, in how would that happen in this technology uh, based future. Uh, and that the tigers are sort of using it as their hidden base and that they're behind it. Yes, and behind the, the ghost virus. Yes. Which, once infected with it, uh, you fall unconscious. And there's a number of things that we find out about that. But I'm going to leave that for you to discover yourself. And the VOD uh -huh. is, well, oh, sure. is well worth the, discuss uh, the discovery. Yes. So, But for right here, uh, for the clip that you're about to see, uh, and uh, it's well <laughs> worth watching, you <laughs> see uh, our characters getting re-sleeved well first getting re-sleeved in the kaijus and then choosing three animals out of all animals anything yeah anything <laughs> you know this beautiful gift that is being <laughs> given to creative people with nothing to lose and everything to gain and no so we're gonna i did not no prep, prep any of them for any of it we had no idea mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but Gosh, we had a field day. So go ahead and uh, check out this clip of us <laughs> in our kaiju creation. We join our heroes as they're being filed into uh, this VR program. You've been explained through noise that this is where you're going to design your kaiju body that you're gonna inhabit to uh, go into this fight. So I'm gonna tell you uh, as players, you have a max of three animals that you're going to combine. In the fight itself, there are no physical weapons allowed, but you're able to grant yourself um, natural weapons, claws, fangs, things like that. Now, this can be totally stretching outside of the humanoid form, uh, which is why it's, it's an underground science. Uh, DHF stacks aren't traditionally made to, to handle this and the human personality also can't really handle this for too long which is why these bouts are done by sort of the lower class that sign up for it for to entertain the upper class uh so let's start over with patch since you took some time 
uh, with this, and Yukio is there by your side. You sp spin up in this virtual construct. Yukio is there with you, and you see uh, this uh, sort of blank uh, cube that you can sort of mold and shape uh, also with your mind. And as you think of things, you see them sort of change and uh, adjust themselves into this model uh, that will take on the form of anything that you'd like. So why don't you describe for me what this ends up looking like? So if, if it's picking three animals without question, he chooses a bat to keep his leathery wings. Also, can uh, keep track of this for me, please, as players, yes. just to yeah. note. Yes. yes. So he, he picks a bat for the leathery wings and uh, shrieking of its voice. He picks a Komodo dragon because it has powerful jaws as well as a terrifying tail. And he picks a pangolin because of it having an intensely armored body. Wow, okay, so what does this amalgamation look like? Because I'm picturing kind of like a dragon. Yeah, essentially, yes. Yeah. It's, it's essentially a dragon, uh, but more leaning into the um, Eastern Asian style of dragon. How many like sort of legs or arms are we talking about? We're going to say six arms, I'd say. Okay, there's six, six, six arms. arms six, yeah, like, like and I will say that the wings there are large, but they are sort of non-functional for flying. Yeah, yeah, and then I assume it's the Komodo dragon sort of snapping jaw. Yep. Amazing. What what color is it? Um, I'd say purples. Uh, -huh. uh like almost almost like a vibrant, like a like a luminescent with light refraction, purple, uh, blue, and then like leaning into soft reds. Ah, oh, nice. So these, the very, like, cool colors that sort of bleed into yes. this, the warmer armor. Yeah. I love it. Yukio sort of nods appreciatingly, and you notice that the makeup is full-on uh, back to normal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then we, we close down and we open up. Let's do Satya next. Satya, you're on your own in this VR construct, but you've got this, cl like, digital clay in front of you. What does it look like? Excellent. Wow. <laughs> For for a uh, uh, fence of power, I'm going with the pistol shrimp. Yeah, <laughs> I love a pistol shrimp. <laughs> yes. That's some that's some raw blasting power. Yes. How does it manifest in this kaiju? Oh, okay. Well, we're we're gonna go with like a uh, physical manifestation of uh, of the pistol shrimp, where it has like the. Um, you know, the larger pincer and the smaller pincer, where it's like this blasting power able to do not only decimal, but also like bullet effect towards his enemies. Is it out of the butt? We could do it, it out of the butt. Do they, do or do, do they the snap? Butt? I forget how it works. We can, we can do it out of the butt. I mean, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which which other animals are you mixing this because, with? Because, yeah, because what well, I mean, like for for what I'm reading, it's the enormous claw that does it. Oh, but okay. I'm all for butt bubble action. <laughs> the the decimal effect coming out. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Yeah. This is such a beautiful gift. To yeah. All of us. My pleasure. Oh my I'm having a blast. <laughs> God. Okay. Um, next up, and I'm sorry if this was already called because literally I I was I was just thinking of like the legendary animals that sure. I could I could do. Um, next up is the kraken. Oops. Was kraken already taken? No. Yeah. What element? So you're taking the the tentacles? Yeah, the, or like I the got beak? the pincers and I got the kraken. Yeah, we're doing we're doing size, and then also um, uh, the kraken has this incredible outer skin against um, pressure and effect. It's almost like an armored. I'm taking it more for the armored defense. Gotcha. That a kraken gives. Is um, it sort of like a legendary Ursula situation where the tentacles are like at the bottom of it, and it's got like the pistol shrimp at top? Uh, well, the pistol shrimp is just like the claws right now with like oh. the offensive gotcha. power, and then like got the uh, you know, like at the bottom. I guess uh -huh. we need a, a type of head for a yes. thing. Then. I mean, if we have to animal. have a head, you don't have to, you don't have to have a head, right? No, right? 
No. Okay, then like uh, for for my third animal, along with that offensive power. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, there was that. There's that uh, particular version of what is it? It's a, it's a it's a fighting crab. Okay. It's a fighting crab that literally breaks its own bones and then <laughs> utilizes them as like improvised weapons. Yeah. You know what? That might be a bit much. That, that's a bit much. That's a bit much, and I totally recognize that. You um, break your crab we'll claw, then, grab it with a tentacle, and then swing it. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, what we'll do instead, we'll do mm -hmm. the regeneration aspect of um, the, the, the common lizard that can regrow its limbs. Sure. So we'll, we'll take that. The regrowing, the regeneration aspect of the common lizard with uh, the legendary armor, armor defense power of the Kraken, along with the offensive <laughs> of the pistol, of, uh, shrimp. The, uh, pistol shrimp. Amazing. Uh, ben 10. What is, oh wait, I'm sorry, what color is it? What does it look like physically? It will be unnatural in nature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, oh, and, but, but I kind of want to keep it towards what Satya does, where she's like this huge offensive thing, but she's also super camouflagey. Ah. Can she be camouflagey? Yeah, I'll say. Really her spectrum of character. Yeah, yeah. We'll say it's like a chameleon sort of uh, like oil slick color. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also it has a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has a mohawk made of like a reef. <laughs> Ooh, cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, Thank ben you 10. for this, Xander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after some fierce Googling about some animals. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I sprung this on all of them. <laughs> um, okay, so I am just really here for colors and shapes and just look, look really cool. So uh, my first thing I'm going to pick is the uh, Japanese spider crab. They are okay. known for having, they're just like a regular crab. But they're better because they have they look like enormous spiders their legs are like seven times as long as a regular uh crab's legs they're in, they're insane they just have real long legs so <laughs> uh i'm gonna have like multiple very sharp pointy legs they're gonna all have individually handcrafted uh bespoke bracelets on them that go <laughs> about like my aura and my feelings like about this year um and one then, of them's a mood ring <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's crab is one uh -huh. <laughs> um the other thing it, that I also Googled is the immortal jellyfish. When this jellyfish gets uh, severely injured, um, instead of dying, it, it like transmutes itself into like, it basically makes little clones of itself. And okay. like, that's how, it's, it's immortal, like it keeps living that way. So it yeah. won't die. So for me, I mean, that's gonna represent in that if I get like seriously injured, I can like, <laughs> kage buchino just do myself. Yeah. <laughs> and make, I can make like temporary clones maybe. I'll give it to you, but there are smaller versions that you can oh, operate like yes. drones. That's great. Or maybe they're just like, they're like weirdly like a third size of me. Sure. They're very fast. But they, they come out of <laughs> your mass. So you only have a few Ooh. of those before like you run out of okay, great. body mass. I like that. Okay, so mini Ben 10s, I'm into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last one, um, I'm going to go with uh, the common moth because I want big fuzzy white wings <laughs> great that's yeah really on that I'm note <laughs> full-on describe like the colors of all these aspects and how they work together as a creature Ooh, yes so the immortal jellyfish is usually clear with a pink center mm. so um basically i'm gonna have like an iridescent like pink like main body and then my spider crab legs are going to be sort of see-through like a jellyfish's legs but they're they look like spider legs um with great. cool bracelets and um <laughs> yeah. And then I think the wings uh, are sort of like a translucent, but they have like the fur on the outside also. Is there a pattern like in the fur on the wings? Um, since I'm genetically engineering this, um, it's just going to say like Ben 10 really big on each wing. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so. Great. And finally, Sable, we, we lock into your virtual uh, studio. Uh, yes, uh, I'm gonna have a hard time with my third one because uh, my third <laughs> one's been changing with each one of you. You have yeah. picked what I've had for my third choice. I appreciate so, the variety. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this, so uh, first, uh, she will add on some pieces and parts of uh, Boa Constrictor. 
okay uh, for the uh, strength and uh, and grippage um secondly uh she is going to uh incorporate some spider aspects uh preferably widow black widow uh okay. so uh that would primarily take kind of her face portion because she wants the the venom fangs and the eyes because Great. Uh, she's kind of a, a perceptive, sighty kind of girl anyways, so that mm -hmm. is very valuable to her. Uh, and then my third one, uh, I'm still trying to figure out, but I think uh, the, the, the uh, I might, I can't think of anything else to fit better, so I might also go with tentacles, because I feel yes. like that goes with the fact that she has the snake body better than anything else. So now she's kind of got uh, these multiple uh, boa, things that she uses like tentacles that are just boa bodies that she can kind of wrap around and uh strangle hold before she uh gnarls into whatever it is she's uh, kind of attacked yeah uh, she's mostly uh like uh she's still scaly even uh -huh. though uh you know it's like tentacles and spidery she's still got the the snake scales um and she is uh mostly black and silver but there are little spots of the lime green and uh the blue and the purple kind of like her makeup color scheme that are just kind of placed throughout it amazing uh yeah so it has this sort of spider-like face with the the eyes and the the pincers and i'll say that um the the extra tentacles also vaguely resemble uh spider legs when they're like rigid but otherwise they sort of flop down at the sides as you move along with this long snake body as well very cool i like that <laughs> Yeah, so everything um, is, it, the paperwork is filed. Uh, you are officially entered uh, as members of the Seppuku Tigers. <laughs> Kaiju creation. <laughs> <laughs> the joy that you radiated out, it was contagious and amazing. I loved it. Well, uh, just like Potter Boy uh, 111 said, you are a gift that keeps on giving uh, Xander genre. Yeah. Thank you. you. I would boop you. Boop. <laughs> also, hi, mom. Thank yes. you for watching. <laughs> we have Mama Ray uh, yeah. in, the, uh, in the chat room right now. <laughs> right, right. But she probably has to go to work, so go go to bed. Get some sleep. <laughs> or, or stay for as long as you want, Mom. Or, Ray. yeah, whatever. You're an adult. You can do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, very interested. And I, oh, I see that, like, um, Lauren, um, not always weak, has already set this up. But I really want to know if the chat has three animals that oh. they would want to do their kaiju. Right. It's like, bring it. Right. There's I so many other animals we didn't think like of. Five of them. And and so I was like having having to make the enemies for you to fight. I was like, oh gosh, there's so many animals to keep track of. So many tentacles and claws and teeth. Yeah. And I would think that there's an argument to be said for extinct animals that mm. we don't have as much information with. Like for instance, the dodo, where it's right. just like, yeah, everybody's like, oh yeah, the dodo was an actual dodo. Like, oh. Well, and I heard that whatever. they could even like run airlines to islands. Yeah, yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. that is a fact. Um, Dodo's I heard it from an airlines. owl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, like who? Who knows? They could have had an incredible defensive uh, prop. You know, yeah. possibilities. Or you can argue that. Like, mm -hmm. who's going to say you can't? <laughs> Maybe the dodo was the direct descendant of a raptor and it had fierce tendencies. There you go. And exactly, maybe it was extremely aggressive and it was like, it's like a bard, like it was his own hype man. <laughs> so- Whoa, Was that bard shade while I'm here? <laughs> what? No, that's not no. bard shade. <laughs> that's bard hype. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Where it's just like you hype, you hype yourself up. Bards hype other people up, but it's, it's also like the Dodo <laughs> was able to hype itself up and how you know, did we get here <laughs> then against all these pluses i don't know Sander. this is how our conversations go <laughs> <I know. laughs> this, this is what it is yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> well we have at not always week said that they totally thought about theirs uh oh. they say i did a velociraptor uh -huh. ah, spitting... velociraptor Ooh. Oh my God. Um, spitting cobra, and I haven't decided on the third one yet. 
He was like, Ooh. those are pretty strong. Velociraptor yeah. and Spitting Cobra. I mean, like that is an offensive machine to be reckoned with. What was interesting with this too was seeing what aspects of the animals that you would take to make a part of your kaiju. Like what was the body, what was the head, uh, the pistol shrimp. It's funny because w watching that back, I was like, why did I think it came out of the butt? And I was like, I think I was <laughs> conflating it with a monster from Harry Potter, like the blast ended Scroot and the pistol shrimp, oh which is an God. actual animal. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. I, w I was literally like, yeah, pistol strip, yeah. shrimp. And I was about to describe like the claw and then like the smaller claw. And then you're like, it comes out the butt. <laughs> and we said it a few times back and forth. I was like, it can come out the butt. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it was like I literally had this like picture in my mind of the tentacles politely ascending up <laughs> <laughs> this offensive attack to happen and like oh emphasis on the offensive and in, in any case mm. um willem the ginger uh they're they're uh three animals bear crocodile and rhino oh uh, yeah okay i like that it's like That's some full metal alchemist like homunculus merging right <laughs> deep cut uh, like you have rhino, I'm uh, I'm assuming that they'll have like the horn yeah. that's involved with that, like the horn and then like that like brute like speed and like Maybe I the mean <laughs> right like grounded energy and then you have bear which is just that's nuts and then like crocodile I assume would also be able to be great in water environments yeah. along with on land and the jaw start like a crocodile jaw with a rhino horn. <laughs> on the end of it and then like yeah and then like a claws. bear body it's yeah. like oh i want honey that's just a platypus i think with a horn a <laughs> <laughs> there it is you heard it here first the platypus is a kaiju that's yeah science the platypus is a kaiju let's not play it is <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I love that our chat is like <laughs> Power Boy One Eleven again with butts. <laughs> with, you know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm worrying that this is becoming Hunter's niche. <laughs> we, we, we had a Ragnarok game. Uh huh. Where, um, butts our, yeah, well, we took <laughs> out a, a butt worm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was gigantic. It was huge. A butt worm. Oh, it's a it was it was in a biot cave. A biot cave. <laughs> yeah, my my character is foreign, so sometimes oh, no. says words differently. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see what some other people uh, oh, said. Oh, okay. So, um, oh, okay. So, uh, not always weak. Uh, came back, and. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Phoenix Goth that said mm. Velociraptor spitting Cobra, and I haven't decided on the third one yet. Oh. My bad. I'm no so way. sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, decide on what that third one is and hit us back with it. For <laughs> not very speak. important. I know. I kind of <laughs> need to know because also, also, I'm thinking, what do I need to do to take down these other kaiju's? Like. Right. That's my thought. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So you went very defensive with the strategies on, on what you were picking. Yes, yes. I tried to make it well-rounded enough with a regenerating factor with, like, the lizard <laughs> you quality. You thought of everything. Crack and defense with uh, also the tentacles. And then that offensive pistol shrimp. Um, I blast. <laughs> I blast out, out a radius. <laughs> and then I can eat you for more health. Yeah. It's horrible. It's a horrible offensive, defensive monster, and I love her. Yeah, um, yeah and you can so, see all of the kaiju that they just described in action towards the end of the episode too. If you want to check out the the VOD for that, but there were a lot of creative uses of of the various body parts. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, Sable as a kaiju did pick up one of the other enemy kaiju and use them as an improvised weapon to hit one of the other enemies. <laughs> Everything goes mm -hmm. in fighting and kaijus. So <laughs> um, for Not Always Weak, they said, okay. So it's a huge, uh, oh, I don't know, echidna? echidna? Is that how you say that? Like echidna? knuckles, yeah. With the mouth of an inland taipan snake 
and box jellyfish tentacles mingled along its spines. That is deadly. I love this monster. This deadly and poisonous and wow. <laughs> <laughs> just like fun all the all the fun poison okay so yeah keep hitting us with your your monsters and also join our discord community uh yeah. we yeah we talk all things with like um altered carbon ofs and mm -hmm. all the other games that hunters entertainment uh produces like you can see some of them behind me icarus for instance so there's fun. also Yes, um, Alice yeah. is Missing Outbreak Undead, which we just had a campaign for that you can check out on VOD mm -hmm. uh, type of a thing. And there's so much more p coming. Um, Powered by Kids on Bikes. There's there's so much awesomeness. So... I mean, to brag a little bit, if you want to see me play Outbreak Undead, you can watch it on We're Alive uh, Frontier on YouTube. Uh, and if you'd like to see me play Icarus, I believe with Spencer Stark, the creator, and Ivan Van Norman, I think there's still a Gen Con video of it. And things got weird. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, and also uh, with uh, Xander, he has done an altered carbon campaign where Ivan Van something, right. Ivan Van Normal, Ivan Van Normal, uh, where, yeah, yeah, the one to blame for all your pain. Uh, I should yeah. say his name right. So, yeah, that's the full title. Know, it's Ivan Van Norman. Yeah. Um, uh, GM'd for that. So, yeah, check that out on Hyper RPG. And then, yeah. uh, yeah, if you want to see me in some things, I did um, Altered Carbon uh, for us with Renegade Con. I've done Alice is Missing uh, for us with uh, Gen Con. And I uh, don't believe I did any Hunter's Entertainment games on Hyper RPG, but just take out, check out on Tuesday nights for... I, I believe that Michelle Wynn Bradley also did uh, uh, an Altered Carbon run with Ivan as the DM. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe hit them up on Twitter. Yeah. And yeah, at I am Chubby Bunny. Right. And go ahead and find out some deets on that. And, I you know, find the VOD for that. I got informed by JB uh, that uh, my mom is going to bed because she's tired, not because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Ray, thank you so thank much you. for dropping by. Um, <laughs> if you want to stop by on Tuesday, we start at 6 p.m. PT, and that'll be the finale of Altered Carbon uh, with Xander as the GM and us doing the characters that we described tonight. So we would love to have you. We'd love to have all of you. Yeah. So, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Ivan Van something's in the chat room. <laughs> oh no, I felt it. There was pain. I know. I was just like, what is this? What is this sense of if I build a very sensitive and vulnerable character that has this <laughs> wonderful backstory that I hope to explore that something might happen to them? How unfortunate. How unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> love it yeah. uh welcome welcome ivan to the chat room uh we're we're just uh so for everyone here in. like please keep in mind to go ahead and uh hit us with any questions hit us also with like uh kaiju so what yeah. we're going to be doing for the second half of everything um we're not quite there yet, but we're about to be there. We're going to talk about all things like GMing in general, because we've got Xander. So we're going to talk about GMing. We're going to talk about playing within these worlds, um, creating them for other players to play in, along with populating these worlds with like NPC and what that means in an altered carbon sense, and then also in other senses. We're going to go over some of the things that we've already experienced in our campaign of Altered Carbon up to this point. Um, and Xander already knows some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about. So mm -hmm. like if you want to reel off some some points real quick. Oh, like fractured, fractured DHF stacks or virus types or um, talent trees. Yes. <laughs> yes, all this wonderfulness. We're going to talk about what happens when someone respins and then uh, what goes on with those ego points ego. there. What what is going on with Patch when Patch went from Luis to Gabe? There's mm. there's something that has to happen up here. Just all these fun things that we're we're going to be doing along with talking with Alexander in general about like backlog of games and probably 
uh, spinning off a little bit. <laughs> it's just going to happen. Yeah. You know, <laughs> as, as we are want to do. So, um, so glad to have y'all think up some questions that you want to ask with like Altered Carbon in general or just like GMing and worlds, like do's and don'ts is what we're like trying to go over with this. Like, uh, so yeah. So up to that point, I mean, Xander, do you have anything you want to tell people in this first half of the show? From what yeah. We're oh, well, some of the, uh, I know that it, it's, it can be confusing because we're playing from a supplement. So I do want to clarify that some of these things are from the ideas from the actual supplement and some of the things are added by the players. Um, but the kaiju idea was definitely coming directly from the supplement. Uh, and then the other thing was uh, blood gummies, the Getsueki blood, blood uh, gummies. Yes. So one of the things that is in the supplement, it, it exists in Altered Carbon too. You can see it in the Netflix series that there's substances that sort of, they're hallucinogens or they're strength enhancing or, you know, there are always some sort of bad effects because it's a good time, I guess. Uh, and in this one, it's um, playing off the fact of like bloodline limits and things like that. And so they're blood gummies. Nice. And, you know, as we know, candy is delicious and dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. Especially in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and also, Xander, um, after you uh, finish wrapping up, let them know where they can find you on social media because we kind of, like, um, cut it into different videos. So then we'll also do it sure. at the end for the second half. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, you can find me at Xanderific with two R's and one F. I'm mainly on Twitter and sometimes Instagram, but I uh, stream on Twitch as well for my personal channel on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I do a bunch of RPGs, so my schedule is constantly changing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Never apologize for your awesomeness. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's great to play with you. It's it's great to be like existing in your world. I've always enjoyed that. You're just like hilarious. Even when we did um when we did like the most like like we went into what happens in the afterworld, like yeah, in the afterlife. The we played Geist yeah. together on QE Times. Yeah. And we went down that hole. <laughs> yeah uh, wraith was such a or not wraith uh, geist was such a fun game to play too uh because it's the the onyx path version um and so there are different versions of the sort of wraith mechanics in that you have this spirit that's attached to your character so you've got two characters that you're sort of puzzling out the mystery for i always get put into these like scary scenarios <laughs> I love that because I'm always put into feel good, like character creature comfort scenario. <laughs> I want to do some more horrors. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love playing puppies. I love playing mm -hmm. puppies, but you know, sometimes I want to be like, you know, a blood sucking vampire that just needs to tear through a crowd instead a of going time. around it. Yeah. I, I can attest. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, that brings us to the conclusion of this part of what we're talking about, which was mainly sort of the recap of everything for um, Altered Carbon. Um, Hunters Presents Alter Altered Carbon Osaka Eternal campaign that we are doing <laughs> on Tuesday nights. Uh, we are two parts into a three-part journey with that. If you want more than that, Hit up Xander for more. His oh. <laughs> hit hit up Hunter's Entertainment if you want more there for that go. coming coming around the corner. Yeah. Although we do have a game already, a campaign planned already right after that. But I'm not gonna say what that is now because I don't know if I'm cleared. Right. <laughs> <You're saying laughs> like you're gonna love it. <laughs> yes, but you're going to love it. Uh, and then also for anyone who is uh, only stopping their journey with us right now know that next week uh friday 6 p.m pt that we will be discussing the finale of um altered carbon osaka eternal with the character patch and by that i mean both of the players that have played the character patch Amazing. uh luis carrazzo and then also gabe hicks along with a number of other fun things that we will be doing on that show so um i am marquia mccarty I've been talking with Xander Genre, and uh, we hope to see you in the second half. But until then, <gasps> beep beep. Beep beep. 10 minute break. <laughs>